How's it going guys? Difficult question, microbiology step one. Before we started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads, melman underscore medical, I'm ehlm underscore medical. Links down below for my telegram. Links to the telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 24 year old woman, she has ruptured appendix and sepsis, blood pressure stable, exploratory laparoscopy. She has a collection of pus, gram stain, shows neutrophils, gram positive rods and cocci, as well as gram negative rods. Aerobic culture on McClunky agar yields enterococci, which the fine bacteria is most likely to be among the gram negative rods. So seemingly nitpicky and obscure question but not my fucking opinion it's on the NBME exam so they want you to know this so let's just flip to the answer choice here choice a bacteroides correct answer now this is what you need to know bacteroides and e coli are essentially the two most common normal flora within the gi tract and both are gram negative rods and you say well and other students who've shown me the NBME question as i fucking said it's nearly identical to this they're like, wait, but how is it not E. coli? I'll tell you why. It's because McCunky agar, you're going to have E. coli. It'll be pink on McCunky. All right. Now, that was something I had learned back in the day during the numerical step one era that E. coli is metallic green sheen on eosin methylene blue agar. Holy shit. And it's pink on McCunky agar. Absolute nonsense. Absolute garbage. Okay. Never showed up for me. But now it's on the NBME exam, apparently. And students, students have sent me this question. I'm like, ha. Huh, that it actually has shown up like for the first time ever. I mean, granted, 11 years after I set the step one, but they're telling you McConkey, they didn't mention the E. coli. It's like, well, E. coli would be pink on McConkey agar and metallic green sheen on EMB agar. So we're left with bacteroides, okay? And bacteroides, in addition, now some of you watching this clip are like, actually, Mike, there's a higher yield point, which is true, okay? And the higher yield point is that. Uh, we have aerobic culture. Bacteroides is strictly anaerobic. So the two ways you can uh, answer this question is you either know the obscure factoid that I just was emphatic about, or you can know the bigger picture concept, which is that bacteroides is strictly anaerobic. That's exceedingly high yield, especially for pulmonary abscesses. Okay, obviously unrelated here, pulmonary abscess, but you need to know alcoholics, those who have Alzheimer's where they, uh, they lose the gag reflex and Parkinson disease as well, epilepsy, okay, you can uh, aspirate with that. So uh, edentulism, so uh, missing slash cracked teeth. So if a patient has aspiration risk and has an air fluid level on a chest x-ray and they force you to pick an organism, normal uh, oropharyngeal flora, that's exceedingly high yield, so polymicrobial, normal oropharyngeal flora for pulmonary abscess, but if they force you to choose an isolated organism, such as in this case, you would choose bacteroides. So oropharyngeal anaerobes, um, so anaerobic bacteroides, and within the GI tract as well, anaerobic, okay? In addition, holy shit, E. coli is pink on McConkie agar, uh, metallic green sheen on EMB agar. So let's just quickly whip through the final answer choice here, Legionella, wrong fucking answer, technically a gram negative, but Legionella is going to be a cause of atypical pneumonia, classically business trips, business conferences, air conditioners. That's the implication where not only does it will it cause a bilateral interstitial pneumonia, but it can also cause hyponatremia and diarrhea. You need to be aware of that. And then wrong fucking answer. Maroxella, wrong fucking answer. And the reason is because it basically never shows up on Yosemite. You say, well, what could I possibly know about it? All right, it is a gram negative, but it's one of the less common causes of otitis media. So strep pneumo, Yosemite wants you to know, is the most common cause of otitis media, followed by homophilus influenza, non-typable, non-typable, okay? Not type B. Type B that we vaccinated against is epiglottitis as well as meningitis, but non-typable homophilus influenza and maroxella cateralis can cause otitis media. Homophilus influenza, non-typable, can also cause pneumonia and COPD, okay? But I've never seen you assembly assess or give a fuck about Moroxella cateralis. As I just mentioned, they like strep pneumo, and they ask that straight up on one of the NBME exams. It's the most common cause of otitis media. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, Proteus mirabilis, wrong fucking answer. So, I mean, this could refer to UTIs, okay? It's urease positive, so it's one of the etiologies for staghorn calculi, struvite stones, ammonium magnesium phosphate, so it can alkalinize 
the urine. Okay, so high pH the urine risk factor for staghorn calculi. That's pretty much all they're gonna do for that. Okay, I mean they could in theory get more nitpicky, uh, ask you that it's oxidase negative, etc. But I don't really think they'll get into that. It's more just they'll give you, uh, as I just mentioned, a, a picture, an X-ray of a staghorn calculus, which looks like a, a ram's horn. And then they might just have the organisms listed as such, and the answer would just be proteus, which is high yield, okay? Proteus, uh, Klebsiella, Serratia, uh, those could be organisms that are associated with staghorn calculi. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.